This episode responses to yes. emails. Well, we finally got enough emails to actually respond. No, that's a joke. Um, <laughs> well, we got a pack of no. them all at once, which was which was which we did is good, and that kind of spawned this. You know, talking talking yeah, about yeah, spawned this, this show. And, and thanks for everybody that's uh, sending in, you know, questions and uh, comments and stuff like that. We really we really like that. And you know what? I'm gonna somebody sent in a, a great uh, a great email um, to in response to I think something they heard on our show. And I really liked what they they had. So what they I had. So it's our response. This is our response to the email myself. show. Yeah. Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show: Home Improvement and Maintenance Tips from the Pros. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help save you time, money, and aggravation on your home maintenance and repair. This edition is entitled Responses to Emails. And as you already know, Johnny's been chiming in on the opening part of this uh, this thing, but we did. We received about four or five emails this month that we deemed needed a response, besides the women from Russia wanting to find a man just like me. Um, oh, anyway. really? Hmm. Really? About, I haven't been sending about, you no, those. John. How about that? Well, you know what? It's yeah. you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hit Larry here with up something with a, with something here. Larry, um, this is gonna be ask Larry uh, anything time right now. Um, so I'll give you I'll give you I'm not gonna say give, give you as much time as you want because I'm not gonna give that to you. But I'm gonna ask you a question. You can't handle the truth, yeah. Johnny. But I'll, I'll give you. you I'll give you about sixty seconds. Okay. Um. Tell us about the uh, P fifty one Mustang. Now, folks, before, which one? Be, before before I before Larry goes on, Larry's kind of the encyclopedia of uh, a lot of air, aircraft. So I just thought I'd hit this. Um, just get, tell me the uh, you know, give our audience a little view uh, preview of uh, how that thing came about. The P fifty one. Well, <laughs> it was basically built. It was designed in ninety days. It was uh, directly in the response to the German uh, BF one hundred nine, and um, it was put together. Uh, the The biggest break in in the it was originally built with an Allison engine, so the P fifty one A model had an Allison engine. It was great under seven thousand feet. Didn't do so good above seven thousand feet. The British, in their eminent wisdom, decided to stick a Merlin engine out of a Spitfire on the thing. And, uh, oh, wow. gosh, when they did that, they came up with the really the air dominance uh, yeah. fighter of World War II. And um, from there, the rest is history. They're, they're, today, they are uh, highly collectible. They're raced. Uh, they've been on all the air circuit racing things. They've, they're, they're pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, it is the basically the pinnacle of piston-driven, uh, propeller-driven aircraft. I think Tom Cruise has one. Tom Cruise has one. He actually flies yeah. his own in Maverick 2. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so that's that's his, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, a little TMI moment there. Too much information from Larry, but <laughs> here we go. So let's on with the on with the emails. On with the emails. So we received a couple of emails from our buddy Tanner, uh, and Tan Tan is is one of our better list or not one of our better. He's one of our best listeners, but he does send us a lot of good information. And so we got two. Uh, one is he sent us a very unique project that he did. He actually built some simulated cameras for a client of his. And um, just we passed this on. This is just kind of an idea for you all to use. Uh, he actually took some Christmas lights and made a, a, a series of different ways to make the lights blink and things like that to 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 effectively, I guess, fool people and he talks about a field so i don't we didn't quite get all the details but sounds like a, a pretty good idea to it for us um one thing i will say i have used in the past and actually it's a long story but i have a uh, altercation with one of my neighbors and i i went to amazon and bought some faux cameras there they are um and they do blink they you put batteries in them and they blink and um gosh they look real and they do work yeah uh, people mention yeah. them and, and my neighbor got very upset <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, t and Tanner's t t Tanner's point here. He he put these together um, using a Christmas light, I think. And and I I've done this in the past um, and just made it made the LED uh, blink. And it, it, blink, you know right. it, anything anything like that um, you know can really fake out you know anybody out there you know. So if you you know if you're doing stuff and you don't want to have real cameras out there, you know, you've got a lot of experience with just this kind of thing as, as well. You know, Larry, you put, you know, just put those cameras around and 
Next thing you know, people yeah, are talking really, about really it work. and yeah, they work. Yeah, they're talking about them. And if they're talking about them, it means they're noticing them, which means they won't be doing things that they're not supposed to be doing, like breaking into your home and things like <laughs> right. that. So, right. um, that, you know, and, and so from a security measure, it's a very inexpensive and for, for handymen out there, you know, gosh, don't, don't forget that you can offer these up to your customers, you know, as a, as a potential, if they're having any kind of security issues or whatever, or they have, you know, gosh, John, if you have an outbuilding, just say you have a shed out that's just happens to be out behind your house, you know, and maybe kind of a secluded area it doesn't have to be that secluded, yeah. but no, anywhere where right. somebody can get into it, you put one of these things up, you put one of these things up and by the way, do change the batteries. Check your batteries every once in a while on them. But they do work. People, they look real. They blink like they're real. And, you know, they could be real. You don't know. Yeah. Now, it's kind of funny in my own situation where where we have this, we have a, a situation with one of our neighbors. And anyway, I um, don't want to get too far into it. But we did put up two real cameras, too, to actually monitor what was happening on this. We have a dispute over a driveway. And um, we put two cameras up on the driveway to basically protect ourselves from for liability reasons because the driveway's all broken up and we didn't if, if somebody trips and falls or something we don't want yeah, we, no, we want to make sure we document yeah. it so a lot we put two real and two fake and so you never know which ones yeah. really are going to be real so but they work and they work and the criminals notice them too oh, yeah. so the bad guys oh, yeah. the bad guys notice yeah. them as well and so they stay away so it's a great option uh for you as a homeowner or it's a great option for you as a handyman to offer as a service that they're out there so Kudos to yeah. Tanner. He he created yeah. it, so that's very very. Cool. It, so one other thing that Tanner brought up to mm -hmm. us, and this this goes to uh, fencing. He found some clips that are screw on clips that you put on with a screw instead of using fencing staples. And John, I guess you you kind of have never put up like wire fence, have you? Not I haven't in a long time, and that that's not kind of my thing. No, I I don't do that. But um, I, right. I know how it all goes. I obviously know how it goes up. And, you know, usually you see those great big staples in there. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I've done, you know, I've done a, more fencing than I'd care to say I've done. And, and one of the things that, that these particular fencing uh, staples are really good is that they go on with a screw gun, just a quarter-inch screw bit. And uh, they're kind of a U-shaped clamp that the screw goes through the center. And Tanner brought it up because we talked about having the wrong hardware in for um, – for pressure treated wood and these particular ones are set up for both pressure treat and for regular wood but they actually are like, almost like a clamp you put it in and you you pull your wire through and you tighten it up with your with your uh plier you, if you're doing wire like barbed wire fencing you actually put some pressure on it and you shoot this thing in there and i'm telling you it's really a good design it's going to hold and it's going to hold really really well and then the other advantage is if you ever have to take them out for whatever reason you can put a gate in or something they actually do come out really really easily they're made by hillman hillman is a very common um uh, manufacturer of hardware out there in the world like almost all the hardware you see at one of the big box stores is made by hillman i don't know that you'll be able to get them at a big box store but i haven't i, I, I haven't seen them uh in all fairness i haven't i haven't looked for them but you bring up a good point because of the pressure treated wood and you know who yep. knows what some yep. of those staples and how long they're going to last in there and then next thing you know the barbed wire is coming off the fence and the oh and the, and staples are a pain yeah. honestly to put in because you have to you need two hands yeah right you need two hands, and really, if you're doing wire fence, you need to be pull. You need to pull on it with a pair of pliers and actually rack some pressure into it. And how you put them in with one hand is really, it's really, really difficult. I hate using fence staples. I really do. I just hate them. That and chicken wire staples are all basically the same. They don't come in a gun either. Um, although you can get staples for a gun now, but so it's not like you just shoot them in with a gun. These are actually, these look actually pretty easy. I mean, it's a quarter inch driver. You just put the zip, you know, shoot them in piece of cake, but you could have pressure on one and use your drill driver with the other hand and you're done. So we'll put there a picture go. of that up on the that's Facebook a, page. That's a good, that's a good tip right there. Yeah. So thanks, Tanner. Yeah. Thanks for that. Cause I didn't realize those were available either. I haven't done, I haven't done real true wire fencing in a long while like that, but, um, still I've done enough of it to know that it's a, a good, it's a good invention. Good, really. And it's really simple. So awesome. Um, we received an email too from Steve. Is it Steve Winter, John? Yes. Is that who it yeah. was? From Steve Winter and and Steve, you you tell this one, John, because you bought the you you did well, exactly. You what know, he said. I think this was right in a response. This was a response to I think our uh, show. I think what, what, maybe that was the one that. What's the things that bug us? The three things that bug us. And I and I think <laughs> I was on a rant about the uh, the electrical boxes. You know where the, the the you know the circuit breakers are. 
break can't see the numbers. Yeah, you can't see the numbers. And Steve wrote in, yep. and um, you know, I'd never even thought about this as easy as this is. Was that he just uses a white paint marker, um, to uh, to 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 paint those numbers, you know, and by the time you fill in those numbers that are stamped in that, in the, uh, the electrical box, you know, then you just go back and wipe off the the rest, you know, and it leaves the, it leaves the, the, the paint inside those, the stamped in numbers. So now you can see it. I'm like, well, you know, so Steve, thanks a lot. I, you know, the first thing I did when I saw this, I was at, uh, I was at home Depot or one of the big box stores. I don't know. You know, I bought a marker. I bought a paint stick. <laughs> Because I'm like, hey, you know what? I, I forgot about you know having having such an easy way to carry around a, a a marking device like that. That's like paint, and I can use it for all all other kind of things too. So you know, that was a good tip right there. Yeah, it's a great tip. It really is a great tip because especially folks, for those of you that aren't young, or the, for those of you whose eyesight is not so good, seeing those numbers sometimes is really hard. Me, but. It, it really is. Yeah. You know, it really, really is. And so really simple salute. We like those simple solution suggestions. You know, that's a simple solution suggestion. And as John just said, there's a lot of other things you can use that paint marker for. So um, thanks a lot, Steve. That was really a good one, folks. And and I do want to remind, I mean, we, we've got one more, too, but I still just want to remind you, folks, if you've got these kinds of tips, share them with us because we will put them yeah, out there. And we, you know? we, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm I'm all ears on these things. I'll use it too. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the, one of our reasons for doing this show is so we can learn all these extra tips, so we don't have to work quite so hard. Bingo. Seriously, and and I'll tell you, like for me, I, and I know I've said this a dozen times, but I'm going to say it again. Listen to the drywall doctor shows. If you have to do drywall, there's two shows we've done with the drywall doctor. He saved me, I can't tell you yeah. how many hours and better quality of doing drywall from just the simple, simple, simple tips that he gave us on doing drywall and on which products to use and all that kind of stuff. But that's the same thing as this. This is a little thing on our bug list, like this not being able to see the numbers. Now we have a simple solution for it. It's just simple. Yeah, so I, thanks, Steve. We really, we really yeah, appreciate that. Because every time that. I go into these... Uh these electrical boxes, you know, the, the breaker boxes and stuff. It's, it's, it's never, lit. it's never bingo. <laughs> That's exactly where I was going. It, the, the light, it's hard to see, you know, and it's just a, a real pain, but, uh, yep. That's a, that's a great tip. That's a good one. And then what was our last one, Johnny? Uh, it was from Kevin, um, Kronmeyer. He, Kevin yeah, Kronmeyer, he's, he's who's been, been on, on the show. show, by the yep. way. Yep. Yep. And, um, he um, is in response to the show about the handyman statistics, and yes. it was and it's my bad. I was gonna uh, uh, post that article on Facebook, which I did, I think, the other day. So it's up there now, uh, Kevin. If if you want, and, and everybody else, to uh, to show the um, you know all the statistics of the article that that Larry and I went through that one time. Um, and I will, you know, just to net it out, I mean, 80%, what, what was it? 80% of the homes they, they predict needs a handyman service once a year. Yeah. In the next 12 in months, the next 12 yep. months, something like that. So, yep. you know, so for everybody that's doing marketing, I mean, just look around. If you see 10 homes, eight of them, eight of them is, a, is, is, is your target. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, we're talking marketing. So, this, so we're recording this on a Monday morning, just so you know. Johnny, give them your marketing tip from the weekend. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's a good one. I went, yeah, you. I went down to the pool, um, this weekend, and all my neighbors are down there. And um, guess what? You know, drummed up uh, two weeks of two weeks of business out of that out of that uh, laying around the pool. And how many beers did you drink, Johnny? No, I don't. I don't know if they were they were alcoholic beers. I don't know if they were adult beverages, but they're they're. I'm just saying it could be there. Be could been some consumption. So you had a good time though, right? I had a good time. Yeah, yeah. You know, had a good time and generated two weeks of business. Yep, yep. And you know, it, just be friendly. You know, uh, for all you folks out there that you know, you just. Everybody was just on me about, hey, I need this done. I need that done. It's in, it's in, it's incredible. Once the word gets out, you know, from the marketing perspective, Larry, you're asking, you know, once it gets out, boy, it it's uh, it catches fire. Yeah, it really does. And and you and to give perspective, John does 
rarely leaves his own <laughs> subdivision to do it, yeah. work. I mean, so he, he, uh, you know, he, ah, his fuel bill is very high. Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. You know, no, not, uh, not a whole lot of traffic and his, jams. And I was going to say, and his commute yeah. time is nil. Yeah. And I've actually, <laughs> I just got a text message, uh, from a, from a, um, a, a neighbor I saw the other day, um, at the, at the pool and um, he just texted me right now while we're talking, and um, he wants me to to work on his uh, golf cart. See, there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> and there you go. So, there's your marketing yeah, tip for the day. If you're in the tip. handyman business, you know, if you're in the handyman business, realize that that eight out eight people, eight out of ten homes, yeah, and that includes the eight out of ten homes that are right next door to you. Uh, you know, meaning in your own neighborhood or wherever you live, that they are going to need a handyman sometime probably in the next 12 months. And, well, there's opportunities everywhere. Johnny finds opportunities at the pool. That's my favorite. Yeah. So yeah. it used to be at the uh, at the local tavern, actually. It used to be. And then, and those, you know, John- I was like, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, you know, that's all that's all great. Um, but it was just that was taking me to the town that's across the street. And I'm like, yeah, that's too far. <laughs> hang, on the, hang on in my own neighborhood <laughs> so anyway one of the magic things of the handyman yeah. business you can do your work wherever you choose is what it is is really 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 is what it is well john don't you do some work in in outer space i swear i swear Man, you i am told- telling you i am telling you yeah we did a show you know i mean it's uh every every day now there's a new ufo something going on this is seems like yeah. Way. I mean, I don't know what I don't know what's going on, but um, you know, somebody's got to get a hold of one of these things. <laughs> well, we do it on yeah. a regular basis. Yeah. We've taken them yeah. all apart. We, got to. we 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 are becoming yeah. experts in hyperdrive. Yeah. That's what I've been told. <laughs> Think about it. Anyway, all right, folks, if you enjoy the Handyman Pros Radio Show, please tell your friends and neighbors. Give them a link to this insanity. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, this was all, uh, with the exception of our marketing tip, was all about uh, emails. So send us an email. We will answer your emails. Um, If you have a more technical question, we'll answer that as well. Those Usually we don't publish. Well, sometimes we do. I shouldn't say that. Every once in a while we do get we get good ideas for shows from our emails. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you want something answered, you have an idea, you want to talk about something, you found a product, we don't care. Send us an email, questions at handymanprosradioshow.com or at handymanprosradioshow at gmail.com. Either way, it will get to us, and we will get an answer and or put you out there on the show. So with that, Johnny, we'll see you next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show. 